Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna get a proof for production using this data set, a machine learning uh, model using SageMaker pipelines. We're gonna be doing MLOps. Now I may have to let you guys know, there are two columns in the data set that if you guys wanna build a better model, more perfect, you guys might wanna do more exploratory analysis and you guys might find out age or sex needs to be dropped. However, in a working environment, most of these columns, uh, they would say, uh, cannot be dropped. So, therefore, you would have to hyper-tune the parameters differently and pass different parameters and see what gets the accuracy up. But let's say you could. You guys might uh, find out in exploratory analysis, you might drop age, sex, or both and hyper-tune the parameters differently. We're going to hyper-tune the parameters to get it at an AUC score of over 70%, which is fair uh, metric in AUC for cross-validation. We're going to be using an XGBoost binary classifier. Okay, guys, let's get started. Download that data set. And then here's the thing, guys. You're going to read this with pandas. And then there's the columns I was talking about. As you can see, uh, most of these are not negotiable in dropping. And fill in A's for zero, n place equals true, to CSV, there's your new clean data frame. Here's the pipeline. Here's what I was talking about. The uh, AUC score is 71%, which this is cross-validation, which is fair enough, you know. But if you guys wanted to get this even more accurate, now I might want to suggest uh, hyper-tune the parameters differently or drop those two. But we have to do what works. Sometimes the, your employer might tell you, you know, these columns, you can't drop them even though it would make your algorithm more accurately. So you have to find a way. Okay, remember, uh, SageMaker Pipelines is CICD. This is, we're building our workflow. Okay, there's your default bucket, your execution role session name, which is a necessity in SageMaker. Your URI, there's your path for new data. Okay, and then let's go back to the pipeline. Okay, you guys see the steps, one, two, three, and then you guys see the condition accurate step, true, registered. Evaluate the top model from the best hyperparameter tuning job. And let's take a look at some more. There's our model deployed to the endpoint. We'll get to that later. And there's our model approved. Okay, I just wanted to show you sneak peek. There's no test data, so I didn't feel like invoking an endpoint for a prediction. Okay, pass those parameters right there at those training instances. There's your pre-processing after you make it. Put the target. Okay, and then drop everything but the... Okay. On an axis equals one. Okay, because we're doing cross-validation later in the PY, in the evaluation PY. There's your framework version. Name it whatever you want for your base job. However, it will show up in that DAG diagram. So, name it whatever you want to show. Okay, there's your processing output. You guys see the path from the marker PY. Okay, and then the retrieve, the image URI, which is uh, what we need to be able to train in the container image. Okay, name it. Okay, there's your evaluation metric, AUC binary logistic and validation log loss for the loss function. Okay, and then this is the accuracy. It scored 80%, over 80% during training. It was just the cross-validation, the accuracy was um, at 70-something percent. In fact, let's go to it. Do you guys see? 71 But guys, uh, that's actually a fair metric, which is passable because we're using uh, AUC as a metric for evaluating it, but barely. Now, you guys might want to change these parameters right here is what I was talking about. And you guys can do logarithmic or linear 
You guys can, uh, there's different scaling types. You guys can do, instead of random, you guys can do a uh, Bayesian strategy. Okay, you guys, see what works if you guys can't drop a certain column and you want to get it even more accurate. This is just a more technical and less on the data science side. Okay, it's picking the best hyperparameter tuning jobs. Now, max jobs in parallel. Feel free to uh, increase if you guys have a higher usage, and then maybe out of 10 jobs, it picks the best job ever. You know, 10 jobs, you can't go wrong. Okay, it's going to pick the best, create the best model, and then there's the second best model. Okay, it's retrieving it. Then there's the evaluation PY where we do some cross-validation. Okay, and then predict X test, AUC, round them. Import those, of course. Okay, and then the classification report. Remember, round because it's binary, round the predictions. Okay, there's our script preprocessor. The base job, that's what we name it. And then there's our property file, the model evaluation report. And then the, par the code, marker.evaluationpy. Okay, there's the processing step, patient treatment eval. Remember, it shows up in those diagrams what you guys put. So pick and then write. If you guys want to get it higher, I had this at 70% for the threshold because I was doing AUC as an evaluation metric. For accuracy, that would be bad, but it but it's AUC, so that's fair enough, you know? Anything less than 70%, just forget about it. But when you're doing AUC for cross-validation in particular, it's passable. However, you want 80, if not 90. In a lot of my other videos, I get things more accurate, but I wanted to focus on the hyperparameters for a binary because I never did the hyperparameters for a binary. And I wanted to get a little bit on the technical side and I wanted to do this data set in particular. Okay, the pipeline, pipeline name, the step tuning. There's our definition of the pipeline. Uh, guys, later down the road, I decided I'm gonna do Azure Cloud and then there's start the pipeline to trigger it from the beginning. Okay, list the steps. Here, let's execute this cell right here. Succeeded, registered. There's the steps, the utils PY to get the latest approved package. And then get the approved package. This is so we can deploy it. The model package, model deploy. And then you delete the pipeline uh, after you delete the endpoint, after you're done with the project. You will be using this to invoke predictions. And uh, if you guys want, hold on. You guys can also send post requests. See documentation for sending a post request this method. You guys can also do Lambda functions. Like if you guys wanted to have a Lambda function step, or just have a Lambda function to send a post request from the outside and create a URL token, even outside AWS, like on Postman, you guys can do that. Feel free. Feel free. Build on what I did and uh, create a Lambda function step, you know? Like in the diagram, it'll show. Remember, build on what I do. What I do, build on it. Make it your own. Improve it for free, for real. Anyways, guys, um, I hope you guys learned from my video, and uh, stay tuned. Next time, like I said, we're gonna do a we're gonna deploy a model on Azure Cloud later down the road. I know I've been neglecting it, but we're gonna do KServe eventually on Google Cloud on GCP with AI Vertex as a service. And they got so much on Google Cloud now. They got TensorFlow serving, you name it. KServe is just a framework that works well on uh, AI Vertex. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned from my video. Stay tuned and uh, 
Remember, Kaggle is where you can go for any data set. What I do, if you guys want to use your own data set and you guys want to adjust the code of proper accordingly and make your own, well, by all means, feel free, uh, build on mine. If you don't want to do the data set or you're at work and you're using your own data set and you want to build on my code, feel free. That's why it's here. You don't have to exactly copy me, you know? Anyways, take care.